Hi everyone, welcome back. It's great to see you again. It gets a little bit lonely in this void here. The topic of today's video concerns the Skylight Actor. So the Skylight is one of the most powerful, but most misunderstood and misused lighting tools in the Unreal Engine. So most of what we're talking about today has already been covered in last week's live stream right here. But I wanted to make a dedicated video about this because I totally understand that not everyone had the time to listen to a two hour live stream. That being said, this was less of a, a two hour live stream and more of a two hour live course. So I was going ahead and talking about the skylight, talking about my workflow when it comes to lighting exteriors. It was a really good time. And not just because, you know, I was talking for two hours, but you guys, the community was one of the best parts of this live stream. You got asked questions, you answer your own questions as well, as well as offering other tips and tricks that even I didn't even know about. I've been using Unreal for what, 10, 12 years now? And I'm the first to admit that I'm still learning new things every single day. I am an eternal student and there's so much to learn. So if you want the length of that live stream, you can find it right there, right there. It's, it's hidden, but it, it's there. And I encourage you to either go watch it and to come join us in the next live stream. We'll be happy to have you. So I'm fully aware that I've been talking for way too long now. You want the juicy tidbits of information. So let's get started. All right, so now that we're in Unreal, the first thing I always do before even placing any light is to create a chrome ball, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and add a sphere here. I'm gonna drop it to this in here. And I'm going to add a chrome material to it. And you'll see the chrome material is very simple. It's just a base color of 0 0.8 or can be one, one or the other, having the metallic set to one and the roughness set to zero. Okay, so this is going to give you a perfectly reflective surface. Now, the reason I create a chrome ball here is because it's going to give me a better visualization of what exactly is being reflected in my scene. Okay, so you're gonna understand how this works real soon. So bear with me. Now that we've created our chrome ball here, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the lights panel up here, I'm gonna go add the skylight. Now let's get the boring part out of the way. One of the main things that the skylight is used for is for HDRIs. So if you have an, uh, an HDRI that you got online and you want to use that, you apply that with the skylight. So if you have an HDRI that you found online and you want to use that for your lighting, you apply it to your skylight. So in order to do that, you need to go into the details panel and in source type right here, we're going to go click on SLS specified cube map, okay? So once that's done, you can choose your cube map right here and we're gonna go just use one of these, for example. And you'll see right away we have, we can kind of see our trees and our HDRIs showing up in the reflection of our Chrome ball. This is why the Chrome ball is so useful because it really shows you what's being lit in your scene. All right. So now that we've covered how to use an HDRI, let's get into the fun part and why the skylight is such a powerful tool. Okay. So I'm going to reset this right here. I'm just going to leave it to captured scene. And now is where things get a little bit interesting. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to disable ray tracing because I don't want any ray trace reflections affecting my chrome ball. I want to make sure that the chrome ball is only showing what the skylight is doing to it. Okay. So I'm going to use a console command and turn off ray tracing. And so you'll see now we've got no more screen, uh, ray trace reflections on our chrome ball here. Just We just have the sky and the big black bottom of the sphere here. Now the first thing I like to do when using the skylight is I like to set it to movable right here. Uh, the reason for that is if you have distance fields enabled in your project, so distance field ambient occlusion, you're gonna get much better shadowing with the movable skylight. If you're using ray tracing, you don't need to worry about that. You're gonna get proper ray trace shadows if you choose the checkbox. Um, obviously, if you're baking the light, that's another topic entirely, but for now we're going with dynamic lighting, set it to movable. Now, the skylight by default has a myriad of settings that are pretty self-explanatory, like in intensity scale. You know, we can choose the brightness of our, t of our skylight here. We can choose the light color, add a tint to it like this, whatever you want. That's pretty straightforward. I think everyone understands this. Effect worlds, and you know, effect world is kind of an important one because as you probably noticed, if you hide the, the skylight in the outliner right here, you'll notice it's still affecting our scene. It doesn't actually hide anything. So in order to hide the skylight, you need to disable effect world like this, okay? Now the next thing I like to do is if you scroll down, 
Notice how the bottom of the chrome ball here is totally black. That's because of lower hemisphere is solid color. I usually turn that off, for the most part. There are some use cases where it can be useful, but for the most part, I tend to disable this. So I'm going to uncheck this, and notice how now we've got, well, instead of being black, it's like blue. Why is that? And that brings me to my next point. The magical setting that is very often misunderstood or misused is right here. Sky distance threshold, okay? So by default, it's set to 150,000. Pay close attention to the reflections on the chrome ball when I set this down to 1. Now notice now, instead of being this, you know, this washed out blue flat color, now we have some details showing up in here. We actually see the reflection of Manny, our mannequin here. We have the, a little ball up here. We have the grass showing up in our, in our scene. Now notice that the chrome ball suddenly integrates with the environment so much better than it did before. Okay? That's what the sky distance threshold does. It captures what's immediately around it now. So when you set the sky distance threshold to 1, it's really important to understand that the position of the skylight actor right here immediately affects what the reflections will be, okay? So let me demonstrate right here to show you what I mean. I'm going to move the skylight actor like over here, something like that. And now we're going to scroll down all the way down here, and you, in Skylight, it says Recapture Scene, all right? I'm going to hit Recapture and pay close attention to the reflections in the Chrome Ball again. Notice how they totally changed. Notice how now the mannequin, our mannequin shows up way over here, and the same thing with our sphere shows up here, right? And if I move the Skylight Actor, you know, over here, for example, and I hit Recapture one more time, Notice how the reflection changed once again. So you're, I think I hope you're starting to understand what the skylight actor is doing when you hit recapture. It's immediate, It's basically becomes a reflection capture actor. If you've ever worked with those, you'll know what they do. And that's basically what the skylight is doing, okay? So it'll update and capture what is immediately around it. Now, what exactly does the sky distance threshold do? Why is it that when it's set to 150,000 by default, it doesn't include the surrounding environment? The easiest way to visualize this is to imagine... I'm going to duplicate this just to give you an idea of what's happening. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to place a default material on it. So imagine this gray ball right here, okay? Imagine this is set to 1. Imagine that this gray ball is the skylight distance threshold set to 1. It captures everything that's around it. Now, if I were to increase the sky distance threshold, it would also increase the size of this sphere. Okay, so now it ignores, the reflection will totally ignore everything that's inside the sphere. It'll only capture everything that's around it. Okay, so if I made this, you know, 150,000 in scale, you'll see, you notice how huge the, our ball is here now, right? Now, it'll, that means it'll, the sky distance threshold or the skylight will only capture everything that's outside the radius of this sphere. I hope this is starting to make sense. Let, let's demonstrate this one more time for you guys. Now, if I select my skylight again and we change the sky distance threshold to a higher value like 100, notice how it's starting to ignore everything that's within 100 units of it. Same thing if I set it to 1,000. It starts to ignore everything that's within 1,000 units. Does that start to make sense? That's what the skylight is doing. It's basically capturing what's around it. And that's why I prefer having a sky distance threshold of 1, because then it creates an HDRI for you that immediately displays what's around the actor itself. Okay? This can really help you with the integration of your lighting and helping your model feel more kind of integrated into the scene. Now, you might be wondering, well, why don't I just check the box right here called real-time capture? Well, the reason for that is that you, when you have a real-time catcher turned on, and we'll see this in a second, it basically ignores the sky distance threshold, which is kind of a bummer. So let's uh, visualize this real quick. If I set this on, you'll notice, hey, now we, we lost our surrounding environment. Now, the advantage of having real-time capture on is that if you update your lighting, let's say let's give it a more of a sunset feeling here, notice how our sky updated automatically. So if you're trying to have a day and night cycle going on in your game or your project or whatever, having real-time capture will really help things feel a little bit more natural. 
Now, the major inconvenience of using real-time capture is that you lose the integration. You lose the immediate surroundings of your model. So turning off real-time capture, and I'm going to bring my sun back a up a little bit. And we're going to recapture the skylight intensity. And now you'll see we have way more interesting reflections in our, in our scene. This is how the skylight is supposed to be used. I know it's weird, but this is like the, one of those little things that people don't really know about. So I, this is why I'm telling you about it. Once you understand how the skylight works, your lighting is going to go to the next level. Now I'm going to turn ray tracing back on. And now you'll notice that there are there is another thing in the skylight that's for ray tracing. So if I select my skylight again, and I'm going to type ray, the skylight has cast ray tracing shadows available. Now it's a little bit hard to visualize in this scene, but I promise you, let's let's turn it on and see what it does. You'll notice we get much more interesting shadows showing up on your models, especially like right around here. Notice how you know, we had this really bright green bounce going on, which is not necessarily realistic. Now it can cast shadows and things kind of feel a bit more integrated. So if you have ray tracing in your project, cast ray tracing shadows goes a long way. And if you don't have ray tracing, no worries. Let's open up another level so I can show you another way that the skylight can cast shadows. And that's with distance fields. So I've opened a new level here. It's part of the Australia package that is available for free on the Epic Marketplace. Let's demonstrate what distance field ambient inclusion does, okay? So I'm gonna select my skylight right here. And in the search details panel, I'm going to search for distance fields. And now you'll see we have a bunch of different settings. So I'm going to totally disable this just to show you what it's doing. So now this is with this nothing, no occlusion, and with occlusion. No occlusion, with occlusion. You'll notice that distance field AO will give you much more oomph to your scene, gives much more depth. Um, and this is totally not ray trace. This is one of the major advantages of using the distant fields ambient occlusion is that you don't need ray tracing for it to work. And it looks pretty good as well. So while I do prefer ray trace ambient occlusion, this is a great alternative if you don't have an RTX graphics card. And plus performance wise, I do think it runs a lot better. So if you're, you know, running, if you're pushing your graphics card to its limits, DFAO is amazing. And I'll show you guys how to enable that right here. So let's go to the settings tab up here in project settings. And we're going to type distance fields. And it says right here, generate mesh distance fields. Okay, make sure that's enabled. By default, if you have ray tracing, I don't think this is enabled. So just go double check to make sure that the distance fields are generated in your project. Once they are, then you'll have access to the distance field ambient occlusion settings in your skylight. And you'll see, you know, it, the results are day and night. As you can see, the skylight is not a complicated thing. It's just a matter of understanding what the sky distance threshold does down here. And once you've understood that, things really start falling into place. And I promise you, your lighting will go to the next level. And that, my friend, concludes this week's video. In the event that this channel has helped you out in any way, and you want to donate, don't hesitate to check the buy me a coffee button found on my channel right here. You can donate to any amount that you want. It means the world to me and really goes a long way into helping me justify the time spent making all these videos, making this content available to everyone for free. So obviously no pressure, but it's much appreciated. That being said, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you learned a little something. Don't forget to hit that like button and comment down below if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.